The views of the guest are that of the guests and do not represent nor reflect the views and opinions of the Lockout Men channel, the recruiter call channel, nor its host. This site content is for entertainment, educational, and informational purposes only. Yeah, so I am. Um, so I'm sitting in Gallup, New Mexico. Uh, I was waiting on the trainee. You know, the trainee said uh, he refused because uh, I had explained to him that, yeah, that there's a horrible smell in the truck. I tried to tell the company that it needed a wash. They told me it would have to come out of my own pocket. Um, and I didn't have the funds to do so on my own. Uh, Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Today's episode is sponsored by The Ridge Wallet. More on them later. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for listening. And in this episode, man, it's, it's crazy. Crazy times for this truck driver right here. He's a driver with Western Express. He's a long haul driver. But from what I could piece together, I think some guy decided to jump in front of his truck to unalive himself. This uh, situation proves to be a lot for this truck driver. And all he wants to do is to go home and maybe figure out what's next no more wasting time let's get it hold on hey what's going on guys on october 9th 2024 in uh, on the outskirts of santa fe new mexico there was a there was a man in the middle of the road i'm a truck driver with western express there was a man in the middle of the road and uh, what looked to me like he wanted to unalive himself i was driving southbound and by the time i seen him it was too late i was carrying a truck and trailer with us 76,000, 76,500 pounds there was no way i could have stopped in time i called i'm trying to make this as short as i can to fit this all in one video but there's so much things that are, have been happening that i I think that the best thing that I could do is keep this on video and let y'all know so that, you know, maybe somebody can give me some advice or, or, or something. I don't know what to do. So a man, a man was unalive. I called 911. The officers showed up. They questioned me and my trainee. They checked the scene. After a long while, I was cleared. And the officer noticed that one of my headlights was not working because of the impact. Man, this is, this is tough. This is tough tough right here man this oh man this is like every truck driver's fear whether it's somebody in the car or somebody in the middle of the road and it just looks like that the guy that was unalive just just jumped in front of this man of course we can't stop on the dime send a car it's a truck it's going to take a couple of football fields to stop and to assess the situation Whew. i'm glad he was cleared so he Said, uh, he, had, he asked where I was going. I said, I have a load that needs to be dropped off in Ruid, but I'm fueling in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he said, well, take this to Albuquerque. I'm not going to put you out of service, but get it fixed in Albuquerque. I said, yes, sir, I will do that. So that was the plan. I was going to go to Albuquerque and find somewhere to park and just process everything that just had happened. Man, that's, that's some officer. It must have had them there for quite a while. But you would think that if you was in a situation like that and the person was unalive would the officer would like literally let you go about your business and i don't know how long it it was for the investigation because he did say that that they cleared him but later in the video he's going to say that the following day that they was able to drug test him somebody came and got the truck but would you think that they would have did all that that night? And if they did clear them and let them go, would they let you go with the truck after an unalive event? I don't know. I I don't I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of sketchy, but still I'm I'm glad this truck driver was all right, but he's definitely definitely feeling some kind of way. So I, I was about maybe like five minutes, ten minutes away from the from the fuel when uh, I got a call from the adjuster for the company, the third party, and they told me to just pull over where I'm at, pull over on the next exit. They need right. to. Uh, they didn't want me to drive the truck, so she told me you can't park here. So just you're gonna take it off this exit. You're gonna park them at a Target or something. So I parked it at a Target, and they got me a hotel. At the hotel, I was drug tested, alcohol breathalyzer, and and then that was it. I'm flabbergasted that they didn't do that at the time. That the officer that 
that gave you the okay to go. He didn't do that. He didn't have the truck impounded, didn't do the, the necessary drug test, the necessary breathalyzer test on you and your trainee. You was a little bit down the ways and, and you got a call from a third party uh, to tell you to, hey, pull the truck over. We're going to need to do some investigation. We'll get you in a hotel. So who did the breathalyzer? Who did the drug test at the hotel? Did the, did the cops come back to do it? Was there more investigation? Was the trooper right in letting you go? They impounded the truck. They wanted to download some data and take some pictures. They took some pictures. From what I saw that night, it was dark, but from what I saw that night, there was there was blood on the deer guard. There was just cracks on the hood. The hood mirrors, some of the pieces were broken off. The front grill, some of the pieces were broken off. It was a pretty big impact. What I saw that night, I've never seen in my life, and I don't wish anybody to go through that because it does something to you. I would imagine so. I would imagine that it does something to you. Yeah, it, it's scary. I can imagine. But did the guy just jump in front of the truck or was it some other thing? And what what did your trainee has to say about all of this? I would imagine that if you're making a video like this, looking for the perfect wallet, meet the Ridge Wallet. With thousands of colors and styles, there's a ridge for everyone. It is designed for everyday use, keeping your essentials organized without the bulk. Whether you prefer the classic look or the bold look, you'll find a ridge wallet that fits your style. Crafted with durable materials, the Ridge Wallet is built to last with its FRID blocking technology, ensures your cards are safe, making it the perfect on-the-go lifestyle. Upgrade from your dad wallet to your new everyday carry. Discover the perfect match at RidgeWallet.com. Embrace your style, functionality, and security and don't forget when you head over to the ridgewallet.com to make your first order make sure you use my promo code youtube 10 with that you would get 10 percent off your first ridge wallet thank you ridge wallet for sponsoring today's episode your trainee would would be able to chime in or the situation but again later down in the video because this is a two-part video the trainee didn't want to be on the truck anymore so let's continue up until that part it did something to me but the only thing that keeps me going is that i just want to go home and see my kids i want to see my family at this point it's all about that it's all about that at this point and it's it's about just trying to get you home because right now you're you're in no condition to to drive no, no condition to do anything at this point. It's mentally, after experiencing a horrifying situation, mentally you're fucked. Proper fucked. So what the company should do now is to get you home. And by the looks of it, you're in a truck. So it's the company trying to get you home. That's what's up. Because right now you ain't in no condition to drive. What about your trainee? What's, what's his situation? Would he be able to, to drive? Would you be able to continue the training? So many variables. So that next morning at the hotel, my trainee got cleared. He got a bus ticket home. The truck was cleared the next day as well, but I wasn't cleared. They said that I needed to be cleared by the police. I needed to be sold. How would you not cleared? How are you not cleared now, but you was cleared at the time of the accident? Just don't make no sense right now. I got a call later on in the day and they said, hey, can you drive the truck? I'm thinking that if I drive the truck home, I would get there quicker than being on a bus ride. I didn't want to ride the bus because I have over a thousand dollars worth of stuff here. See right there, let me stop. Let me stop the show. People, drivers, young drivers, new that drivers that's coming into the industry right now, I keep stressing this and I'm gonna keep stressing this. Stop bringing everything in the kitchen sink. Now, I'm not sure how long he's been driving for Western Express. Maybe he drove for them for quite a while to accumulate a lot of stuff in his truck. 
but i'm just saying for the new jack drivers that's coming out here you don't want to be suggested by relying on the company to get you home if you need to get home that's why gold bag book bag and an essential bag is all you need you don't need nothing else especially when you're starting out because you don't know whether or not you're going to be with that company so you don't need to bring everything in the kitchen sink book bag gold bag hygiene bag that's it it's all you need for the moment i mean for anybody that's worked with western that's a lot bro because you don't get large paychecks here and i didn't want to leave this stuff behind i wanted to rent a car it would have been quicker but i said okay if i get the truck they'll send me home right so they get me a truck and they asked me if i could drop off the load which was on the way home so i said yes I the load is still important see that's what i'm saying these companies they don't they don't care they don't care you could be mentally fucked up and proper fucked and they still only thing they care about is hey can you get that load can you get that load to where it needs to be no i need to get home i got so much shit on my mind right now that I, i'm not focused but all you care about you in one breath you'd be like oh okay well we feel for you sorry about that's happening and all like that but on the other side of it like hey can you still get that load taken care of for us really really I, bro 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 come on now help me understand no nah, i no nah. get somebody out here to t call this load and route me home so i can get myself back together do that but as i'm driving through that night i would pass through dark patches of road i would pass pass through potholes and because of these low beams and the distance that you could see through them i would think that there was somebody trying to cross the road so i knew that wasn't right i knew that i wasn't it wasn't safe for me to drive at night but the, the drive wasn't far away i think it was only like a two hour drive so I, I i ended up turning in the load but i sent in a message to the company i told them i can't drive at night when the headlight is out if I get pulled over by a DOT officer, they're going to put me out of service and I'm going to be in a violation. So this company, I'm, I'm going to say Black Ops Company. So this Black Ops Company, that is Western Express, had you to drive, had you to drive not only a damaged truck, but had you to drive to drop the load off. They didn't even bother to have you to go to a TA, Loves, or 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 freightliner to get the the front headlight repair and bro you you got some because i think you're made of sterner stuff because if that was me i wouldn't have did it i would have parked that truck i would have told them where that truck was at i would have told them they would have to come and get it they would have to come and have somebody to come and t call this load i told them where they could stick their uh, if y'all can't get me home i'm gonna get me home that's where we at with this we're we're nowhere else but getting me home right now that's what's up if i if i'm gonna continue I'm, i'll do it during the day i feel much safer driving during the day plus i could see more throughout this whole trip i'm driving in this truck and through the air vents bro the smell that comes out of those air vents it's not nice and uh, so yeah so i ended up turning in the load and i park it i don't pick up the next load i got another load and it was coming out of pruitt and I noticed the next morning when I was going to go pick it up at the same place that it was actually going to Yuma, Arizona. And then that one had to be turned in on Saturday. And then I had to pick up on Monday from Yuma and then go to City of Industry in California. So I was like, wait a minute. Where's home? What, what are they doing, bro? And why are they doing that? Why are they putting loads on top of that the truck is in damage? And the fact that you're in no position to drive see that's what i'm saying man these companies like those type of black op companies all they care is about is make the money hey we we're gonna send you home but can you break can, can, can you take a load with you? no 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 you can't take no load with me i i'm going home what? why are y'all not routing me home somebody just got unalive and that's on my heart right now but y'all don't care about that. And we're not even sure if he was still cleared. So I'm assuming since he's driving, he's cleared. So what's going on here? Let me know in the comments below. What 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 is this? Like, why they can't get this man home? Like, 
I'm still working for you guys. I, when I told you guys from the beginning that all I wanted to, to, was to go home. Like, get me something to go home. Hey, well, we're working on that. That's the plan, Jose. That's the plan. And I was like, like, dude, like, what the hell? You know, like, no, like, I'm not doing that. I'm not sitting in this truck. I don't want to be in this truck. I don't want to drive in this truck. Dude, like, like, y'all don't know what, what I saw. You know what I mean? Or what happened, for that matter. And again, like I said, this is messing with this guy's mental and these and these guys just trying to keep him in the truck so they can make more money before he get home that's what it's all about that's what it's all about it's all about the money they don't care because they get to go home they sh they eight hour shift is up they're done they're going home they're in their bed they're with their family oh we're trying no don't try do bump all that do what like I said before, this guy, he, he's better than me. Where you want where you want the keys at, bro? Oh no. So what you gonna do? You gonna abandon the truck? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. In this case, yes. Because y'all not doing right by me right now. I told you I'm not in no position to drive. I told you that I needed to go home. I told you I need to get this off my heart. At this point, where you want me to drop this truck off? Either that, or I'm gonna go ahead and drive over to the nearest state trooper and let them know and lead the truck with them. Go to the next scale house and lead the truck with them. Because right now, y'all don't give a hoop about me. If y'all did, I will be going home. And I'm still right now in this truck. It is Saturday. I had parked in Gallup, New Mexico because I told them that I couldn't, that I couldn't continue driving, that I needed some help. I needed somebody to take over and just get me home. Swap a load, do something, just get me home. They ended up calling a trainer, another trainer that had a trainee that was graduating that day to pick up the load and to swap loads and he was gonna drive this truck to get me to California, to get me to the terminal so they could, so I could catch a ride with somebody else to drop me off at my house. And I said, okay, that sounds good. You know, I'm, we're, we're getting, you know, we're moving. I want to go home, you know, that that's what's important to me. And uh, so they gave me the contact information. I, I get in contact with the uh, trainer and he's like, well, what happened? Like, you know what, you know, the situation I had explained to him what had happened when he found, when the trainee found out what had happened, he had told the trainer, hey, you know, well, has the truck been washed? I said, bro, I've been telling them, I've been calling them to let me wash the truck. They said that if I wanted it washed, that it would have to come out of my own pocket. Say what? Wait, r run that by me again? Has the truck been washed? I said, bro, I've been telling them, I've been calling them to let me wash the truck. They said that if I wanted it washed, that it would have to come out of my own pocket. Man, that's a lot. That, this is a lot to take in, man. Number one, the situation that had happened initially, the unaliving of an individual that jumped in front of this man's truck for whatever reason, the fact that the trooper on the scene let the let the guy go well he he cleared the guy let him go but still let him drive the truck they drove the truck now he gets cleared again now the company is over bsing with him to get him home now that he hooked up with somebody that got somebody else in the truck that's supposed to switch trucks you still driving the truck with all of the all of the smell and the remnants of of the unalive person that's mad diabolical right there bro and the company refused to send you a calm data check to get the truck washed they inspect you to cover that oh that is mad work right there man that's again this guy's better than me you're better than me bro i don't make enough money in this company to wash a truck i could barely feed my kids and pay my rent and pay my bills and they still want me to do this drivers listen new drivers listen because western express is one of those black op companies that would take advantage of you especially if you have some situations on your background now, i'm not sure if they work with sap drivers but i know for a fact that if you have a felony or something like that black ops company restaurant express is one of those companies that gives you a second quote unquote second chance but in order to get on with them they will take advantage of you and the way they take advantage of you is because of the amount of money that they're going to give you in order to drive with them oh hey you you tried out for us express you tried out for snyder you tried out for 
prime and every last one of them told you no okay well we got you but in order to drive for us we're going to give you 45 cent a mile you take that as you will he refused he refused to take this load if the truck wasn't washed clean so they took him off they they, they left me in the truck they ended up calling me and telling me, hey, Jose, we're just going to get you a bus pass. I said, I told you guys I can't get a bus pass because I have stuff in here. Let me rent a car. Well, if you rent a car, it's coming out of your own pocket, Jose. Wow. The cheap way. That's how these companies are. They, they look for the cheapest way possible. That's crazy because I was broke down. But that's going to be a whole different story. I'm, I'm going to save that story for later. But the, the companies always try to find the cheapest way possible to accommodate their drivers and that's crazy and these are the same companies that be like oh we treat you like family we want you to come drive for us we, we do, do this that and the third yada 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 but then they're but they're also saying oh well if you want to do something go home or anything like that it's going to come out of your own pocket that's why i tell you new drivers to always have some money i know when y'all get with companies like this these black op companies y'all gonna end up working paycheck to paycheck and i get it but you better start saving at least one of those one of those paychecks so that if you're ever in a situation like my man jose here you'll be able to have some money and you won't need to rely on the company to help you out you'll be able to rent your own car you'll be able to get yourself home I said, you know what? I told, I think it was my driver manager. I said, you know what? Tell whoever, whoever told you that, tell them to stick that fuck, that uh, bus pass up their ass. I'll buy my, own, I'll get my own, uh, my, my car to rent. So I guess the guy that, that had said that got offended and gave me a call back. And I said, yeah, I said that. I mean, you guys, are, and you guys are not doing anything for me, bro. You guys are not doing anything. Like you got, like I'm really, I'm literally going through it, and all you guys can do is just give me a little bus pass here and there, trying to have me finish off loads. Like I'm still worried. Like you guys still need to get paid. Like you guys still need to. It's all about the money, bro. That's all they care about. They don't care about you because if they did, they would be hauling ass to get you home, regardless. They would have gave you a calm data check to get that truck washed. They would have made a way possible for another driver to Ben came out there to T call that load. Yeah, they don't care about you. They don't. None of these companies do. Well, maybe a few, but the black ops companies in your face. Go right behind your back. That's why some people be like, yo, don't give them no two weeks notice. Nope. Don't do that. I don't. I'm gone, I'm gone. I'm gone, I'm gone. You don't tell them right off the rip. You get home, you clean out your truck, and then when you get back, then you let them know. Hey, where you want me to park this truck at? What, what do you mean park the truck? Where, where you going? I'm out. But well, aren't you supposed to give us a two? No, I'm out today. You could put that on my DAC report, which I know you're going to do anyway. He didn't give us a two week notice. Why? Y'all got, y'all, y'all got, y'all got drivers that comes in every day every day all day y'all y'all bringing in new recruits every day every wednesday every thursday every friday y'all got somebody new coming in there so why should i give you a two weeks notice for you you're not going to get two weeks out of me i'll drop this truck off y'all go and get that truck clean and y'all going to repurpose it for the next driver that y'all just hired in a few days ago so why should I give you two weeks notice? You ain't going to give me no two weeks notice when you fire me or or tell me I got to come and pack up. Hey, why don't you why, why, why don't you just drive all the way up to the terminal and and be at the terminal at nine o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning? Yeah, but my 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 clock is up at one o'clock in the morning. And I, I thought that you want me to take the load down to Georgia, which was kind of crazy to me when you asked me to do it but hey you i ain't gonna I ain't, I ain't gonna say nothing just gonna get the load and and go on are you sure you want me there at nine o'clock in the morning yeah 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 i i i need you to be in the terminal a terminal at nine o'clock in the morning no oh, okay nine o'clock in the morning rolls around i get there hop out of the truck put it in the dock hey what, what trailer i'm about to hook up to because now I, I don't think i'm going down to georgia i don't think i am I, I i think i probably might be getting another load that's going somewhere but that was happy go lucky hey yeah I, where, where where are we going we'll try to look it up no nah, i need you to talk to the safety director which happens to be his wife by the way just saying oh okay 
No, no problem. So yeah, these, so yeah, why should I give you a two weeks notice? We just sat there and we just amicably parted ways. Just like that, just like that. Here's uh, the other part of his video. Yeah, so uh, so I'm sitting in Gallup, New Mexico. I was waiting on the trainee. You know, the trainee said that he refused because I had explained to him that, yeah, that there's a horrible smell in the truck. I tried to tell the company that it needed a wash. They told me it would have to come out of my own pocket and I didn't have the funds to do so on my own. So because the trainee refused, they were gonna get me that bus ticket to the house. I said no because I needed a rental, because I needed to get my stuff off the truck. And they said, I'm sorry, we can't help you with that. I said, what do you mean you guys can't help me with that? So when I spoke to the higher ups, they were calling me, the attorney was calling me, the adjuster was calling me, the, uh, I don't know who Jim is, or, or, or Richard, Richard, or Jim. They were all calling me and they were all telling me, yeah, we're gonna get you like a plane ticket or we're gonna get you a rental, whatever you want, you know? We're, you know, I said, you know, all right, sounds good, you know, like, but then you talk to this terminal right here in Bloomington and, and all they can do is a bus pass. All they can do is a bus pass. They can they can do more than that, bro. Don't 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 listen to that garbage. Don't listen to that bullshit. A bullshit? A bullshit? A bullshit. They don't wanna give you any other ways of getting home because they're cheap. They they could give you a, a, a plane ticket, a rental car. They could do that. But no, nah, they, they want to be cheap. That's what US Express did to me. They gave me a bus ticket. Didn't, didn't, didn't leave me with no other choice but to hook up with my son so that I can get a rental car and go home. But see, back then, rental cars was easy to rent. The, the one-way rentals, rent it from Georgia, drop it off in Cleveland. Rent it from Cleveland, drop it off in Georgia. But now since the pandemic happened and all sorts of crazy things, only certain companies, rental companies, do one-way rentals. I think Enterprise still does one-way rentals. Unfortunately, me and Enterprise is not on good standing right now. Maybe I should change that next year. But I know a few companies like Hertz, Avis, because when I was stuck out in Indianapolis for those two and a half days when I was broke down and I was trying to find my way home because the company wanted, wanted me to stay at the repair place instead of me staying at the hotel. Again, that's a whole nother story for you. I, I'll tell that probably later. But in any case, I was calling. I'm trying to I'm trying to get home, I'm trying to get back to Ohio. Was it just right over the border? Nah, nah, I couldn't couldn't get couldn't couldn't get no one rate rental. So unfortunately I was stuck. At that particular point, I was stuck and to rely on the company per se. Hold on. What's going on, guys? I just want to stop the video right here, right quick. If you guys made it this far into the video and you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that like button for me, bro. Hit that like button. It's free. It's free. If you made it this far into the video, man, make sure you hit that like button. It's right up under the video, man. And if you guys like more content like this, consider, okay? Y'all got two options. Well, one, but two options. You can either subscribe for the channel for more. And if you really want to rock with me and get the videos early, make sure you join. Join the channel, all right? Shout outs to all my members of the channel that rocks with your man. Thank you very much. Now let's get back to the show. It's something that I really didn't want to do at that point. And if I would have had to stay another day or something like that, then yeah, I probably would have just did the extreme and rented a U-Haul and got home. Because at that point, at that point, you took me out of the hotel for me to go back to the repair shop to wait for the guy that's supposed to come and get me and the truck because don't forget you guys did not want them to fix the truck but yet you 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 found somebody to come and get that load i was on though yeah they could get you home bro they 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 just being cheap do you want to get something now so we can pay the difference we'll pay the difference of what the what the bus ticket would have cost i was okay with that you know just help me you know so i ended up calling the car rental place in gallup they didn't have nothing until Monday because of the balloon festival going on in Albuquerque. Uh, you know, all the hotels were booked and you couldn't find anything. Uh, 
So I was like, okay, I had my, uh, my family was helping me out, trying to find this car rental place where I could rent a car. They saw that maybe Flagstaff had a car rental place. So I drove from Gallup to Flagstaff and uh, trying to find a car rental place so that I can get on a car. And uh, they said they didn't have anything as well but I was already on my way to Flagstaff. I said, okay, you know what? I, I, I was still on, this whole way, this whole time, I'm still on route with the load that I have on me, which was going to Yuma. So I figured, you know, the closer I can get to it, as long as I'm staying on route, I don't see why the company would have an issue, right? Getting the load closer. So, uh, so I continued from Flagstaff and I said, I'm for sure I'll find something in Phoenix. If anything, I'll take this load all the way to Yuma and I'll find the car rental place in Yuma. So I wake up this morning today and then uh, I'm in Phoenix, I'm in Buckeye, Arizona. And uh, I was like, okay, I stopped driving here as well because it was already dark. I didn't want to get pulled over again. I don't have a headlight that works. And it's just a lot safer for me, you know, like, yeah. So I've been texting them since yesterday. Hey, put that load back on me because I'm on the way to go drop it off. I, w I was going to go take it all the way now. But uh, anything to get me closer to getting a ride so that I could go home. Yuma's only like two and a half hours away or something from here. I figured, you know, I woke up this morning. I said, okay, maybe I, the load is back on me. So the load is not on me. I give them a call and they tell me, I sent them a message first and I said, hey, can you guys put this load back on me? Like I'm, I'm two hours, two and a half hours away. I can go drop it off. And then my plan was, okay, once I get to Yuma, I drop this off. I could either leave the truck there, or park it somewhere at a truck stop and then find the car rental place or somebody's gonna help me to get to California faster. You know what I mean? But no, the load is not on me and I'm not even assigned to this truck anymore. Wow, that's crazy. This story just gets crazier and crazier. The more he explain it, the more we listen to it, man. And it all started with an unfortunate situation of a person jumping in front of his truck for whatever reason to be unalived. And the domino effect just keeps falling. And it's just one unfortunate situation for this driver after another one. And this company ain't doing nothing, nothing to to help this driver to get him to his family listen y'all y'all better y'all y'all better listen y'all better listen and learn y'all better y'all better use this as a learning experience when you guys be vetting companies especially black op companies like western express man this is the second story that i have heard that a dispatcher or or the the dispatching team is not trying to help out this driver you guys know what happened to the other driver he couldn't drive and he was he he felt that he was a danger to the road but the dispatcher wanted him to get out walk around the truck a few times so that he could still get that all important load to the receiver i don't care about the driver i only care about the load and it is true to this very day because there was a text message that was sent to a particular driver that said and i quote my client's lows is more important than you being the driver for this company oh that's that's what it is and y'all the same people that that asked us to give you two weeks notice and you turn around and say some shit like that but inspect us to still give you a two weeks notice though they literally put me to the curb they literally took me off the truck and their thing was well, we got you a bus pass. Oh, we were trying to get you a bus pass. We were trying to get you a bus pass because I had told them that I preferred, you know, to oh. rent a vehicle. So yeah, so I'm not even supposed to be in this truck anymore. I'm stuck here in Phoenix. I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna send somebody to come pick up the truck and they're gonna have me get my stuff off on the side of the road. Yeah, Western's a great company to work for. So I don't know what to do, you know? The only thing I wanted was for me to go home. And that I've been with this company for one year. I've seen the, the, the things that they can do. I had a very good driver manager who gave me the miles, you know, my paychecks would come out all right sometimes, you know, especially as a trainer, a lot better than when I was running solo. So I've seen the strings that they can pull to get the job done, whether it was to swap a load with somebody else, they'd get the job done, you know, we could get the job done or I could get the job done. And, but no, not this time. They didn't want to work with me. They didn't. They weren't trying to get me home. They wanted me to do two more loads before I go home. So they just up and left you. Companies do that. Companies do that. They just up and let. They just up and leave you high and dry. They do that. Female driver talked to me about several months ago where 
company told her to get up out the truck in South Carolina. Just told her to leave the truck right there at the pilot. Our, our time with you is at an end right now. She tried to explain to them that she wasn't comfortable driving the truck. She felt that the truck was damaged. And instead of the company sending her over to a pilot or TA or Loves, nah, it wasn't that. They wanted her to drive from South Carolina all the way back to Ohio and bring it to the terminal and bring it to the shop there so that they can save some money. Think about that. Think about that. Same thing with the, the black ops company right here that just told him, oh, well, since we're trying to get you a bus ticket to get you home, it ain't no point of you even being back in the truck because now we are afraid that you gonna take the truck and abandon it. So instead of you abandon the truck, we just gonna take the liberty of putting you out of the truck right then and there. You guys better pay attention and listen to these stories, man. I know a lot of you guys out there be like, well, yeah, that's his experience and that's never gonna happen to me. She, dude, okay, okay, never happened to me. I, I thought a few things would never happen to me. I never thought that I would never leave US Express. I never thought the thing that happened to me over at Wooster Motorways. I never thought that I I, I never thought that I would leave JR Swoogle. I thought JR Swoogle was the best company on the planet. As much promotion as I did for the company, I didn't think what was gonna happen to me with the Black Ops company happen. I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. So yeah, yeah. What they did to this driver right here, man, was was bad, bro. It was bad. It, it, it was bad, man. It was bad, bro. But him, what they did to him, that's just diabolical work. I could have done the load, just make it on the route to go home. I'll leave the truck if it's, if somebody's in the area, somebody can pick up the truck, you know, they could have took it over. I could have drove it to the terminal. I could have gone home from the terminal, but no, go take this to Yuma. And then from Yuma, wait till Monday and get another load and go to City of Industry. So yeah, this is the situation. This is what had happened. I'm still stuck in this truck as of right now, but I don't know when somebody will come and pick this up. I don't know if I should just drive to a car. It's Saturday. I know they're only open for a few hours. If if you're still in that truck, now I don't know how long this story was. I, I was just linked to this story from TikTok. This driver, I'm not even sure his TikTok name is J Walls84. Is that his? Yeah, yeah, yeah. J Walls84 on TikTok. So definitely go over there show this man some show this man some love man try to give this guy some advice or something like that i i don't know if i don't know of his situation right now but hopefully hopefully he's able to number one get back home number two get his stuff out of the truck well number one get the stuff out of the truck number two get home well number one get home <laughs> number two get his stuff out of the truck and number three, get his mental back together. Because right now he's he's messed up. And this company did not make it no damn better. No damn better, man. But it's not just it's it's not just Black Ops Company Restaurant Express. It's Black Ops companies all over that does the exact same shit. There's plenty of drivers that it happened to, and their stories is not being heard. And this driver right here just wanted to get his story heard that that's why he documented it because he want his story heard and hopefully people that hears his story not only help him out to give him some advice but take this as a learning experience for themselves when they vet these companies if any company tell you that they treat you like family bruh run fast run because ain't no company out here treating you like freaking family you're not their family you don't have you you don't have their last name that's that ends in an ic or is or rockefeller or burton you're not family you're not distant you're not part of the oh we're well, part of the family no we are an employee treat me as such take my word for it when it's time to get things done and you run your ass off and be quote unquote loyal to these BS companies, yeah, they're gonna love you. 
They're going to take advantage of you. As soon as you start doing shit out of the ordinary and, and the company catch on to it, they're going to keep doing that. They're going to keep asking you, can you do us a favor? No, no favors, no more favors, no more loyalty. Just all you got to do is give me the load. I'll run it, pay me on Friday, and we'll keep it moving. When crazy stuff start happening and I see that the company is 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 going against me, then it's time to go. Ain't no more favors. You can't get me home, I'll get me home. That's where this is. This is where it's at. I'll get me home. Don't worry, hey, hey, Black Ops, don't worry about it, I got it. Well, what do you mean? I got it, I got it. I got me home. I got me home just in time for Friday. Unfortunately, I didn't get me home because of my father, my, my stepfather passing, and I wasn't able to make it to his, his, his funeral. After I told the company, hey man, I need to be home Wednesday. My father, my stepfather, my sister's father, funeral is on Wednesday, bro. Oh, okay. Tell me why I'm driving on Wednesday. Didn't get home until late Wednesday. And all, the, and all the company could tell me is, I'm sorry, man, for how trucking is, for how trucking goes. They use that excuse. They, they, for whatever BS shit that happens, they always go to this excuse. Oh, but that's trucking. Well, you can't never tell in trucking. Yeah, yes, you can. Because I told you, I gave you ample enough freaking time to get me home on Wednesday. But yet you didn't do that. And the only thing you could tell me is, I'm sorry for your loss. But I was still cool with you guys though. But I wasn't gonna let that happen when my uncle passed though. May he rest in peace. Nah, my uncle's funeral was on a Wednesday. You best believe I took Monday and Tuesday off. But see what I messed up at, guys. Because this is another story too. I, I got plenty of stories, man. Just, just hold on. Hold, hold on. I'll, I'll come through at some point. But my uncle passed this year. May he rest in peace. So I, I wasn't gonna let what happened last time happen this time. I, I took Monday and Tuesday off. I took Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I shouldn't have came back Thursday. But I, I told my dispatcher. I said, Hey, I'll come back Thursday. Th this was the plan. Listen, y'all. This was supposed to be the plan. I'll work Thursday and Friday so I can have the weekend off so I can spend the rest of the week with my sister and her family. I get there Thursday. Plans change. Oh, one of our drivers called off or, or one of our drivers got sick. One of the drivers that was supposed to go down to Texas, something happened, okay? What they got to do with me? Well, well, can you can you do me this favor and and I'll make it up to you the following week? I, I shouldn't even did it. I, I should have just turned my ass around and went back to fuck home. That's what I should have did. I should have did that, man. I that's I should have did it because the downturn of my situation with the previous company happened after my my uncle passed. And the situations that led it up to me leaving them stem from going down down to texas and what happened to me down there but that was all because of the fact that the dispatcher asked me to do a freaking favor and i was like hey no problem loyalty you see where loyalty gets you it gets you shit. so no loyalty that's that's just me i'm not gonna tell you what to do if you loyal to whatever company you drive for more power to you hopefully that company be number one to have your back all that shit. but i tell you this one soon as soon as you start being a yes man and start being a question man or something happen best believe that company is not going to be in your corner anymore think about that think about that guys let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below leave your thoughts advice i'm not sure if he's still in that situation so leave the comments of what you would have done in this situation and how you would have handled it all right if you guys have any stories or anything like this or any links send them over to me that's lockout man podcast guest at gmail.com if you guys want to come on and share your stories like this or other stories the same email lockout men podcast guest at gmail.com